Um, how was your, did, were you guys all here yesterday? So, by a show of hands? Oh, so you guys are here just today. I had to work yesterday. I know, uh, I know. That's what's tough about Fridays. The sad thing is I work like three and a half miles from here. Okay. I'm at 4.30, but I can't come without her. So I'm all the way home in East Mesa and then come back. Okay. That, so. that was kind. Yeah. That's I very that. nice. That's very nice. Today and tomorrow. Okay, Excellent. good. We have a Excellent. lot of, um, so, you know, Megan's panel is today, and then Rachel Lillis is also today at 1.30. Tara Sands is at 3. And then um, another one that I'm moderating is Helena Taylor. She plays Bayonetta. Um, so that one, I believe, is at either 5 or 5.30. Uh, so I hope to see you guys all at these panels. They're, they're going to be fun. I mean, uh, it's, I'm, I feel so lucky that we have the guests that we have this year. So definitely take advantage of it. Um, because if I were you, I'd be flocking and <laughs> I just, I would make sure I'm here. Yeah, I'd be geeking out. Um, yeah. I just met Helena. She's so lovely. And she lives on a boat on the Thames. So you could ask her about that. She is, um, everyone's been so wonderful. Helena's like a fairy. Like when you talk to her, <laughs> she's right. She's like this yeah. like magical, like British woman. Um, and she's so kind. So definitely uh, after this panel, go head to her table. She's wonderful. Um, uh, the, the, um, the autographs and the selfies and the recordings, all of that money is going to charity for her. So she's, yeah, <laughs> she's, she's wonderful. So definitely she's visit her. Cool. Yes, at least say hi. She's so open for you know, people to stop by and say hi. Um, so that would be awesome. So I'm gonna, I think I'm going to start. Yeah, let's do um, it. So this let's is, rock it. Uh, yep, this is Megan Hollingshead. Uh, she, yes, give a round of applause. Woo! She uh, plays the original Nurse Joy in Pokemon and also my Valentine in Yu-Gi-Oh, um, who's my personal favorite. And I'll take it from there. She, she has so many credits, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you do an intro, and then we're going to start with the Q&A session. Yeah, and uh, uh, Nurse Joy in Pokemon was my first and favorite role just because she was the first, and then my Valentine in Yu-Gi-Oh, and uh, some of my recent and better known roles are Shizune in Naruto and Rangiko in Bleach. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm here for you guys. I'd love to know what, what you want to talk about, and I will talk about anything. So, so don't be shy. So don't be shy. Does anybody yeah. have any questions, or I could just start talking? You know, it's early. Does anybody want to? shake out a little bit. <laughs> I always do warm-ups before I talk. Yeah, any questions you have about um, Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh, um, you know, she'll answer them. Come on, you guys. All right, go ahead. Go to the hey. mic. Yeah. And loud and proud. Uh, you're Nurse Joy. How long did you do that for? When did you start it? And then when was, like, the last time you actually recorded for that? I started in, uh, when the show started in... Uh, 1998, I believe. Um, we were talking about it last night, and the first we heard of Pokemon was that it was a Japanese cartoon that um, gave that made children in Japan sick, and we were like, "Yeah, we'll do that." Um, uh, we didn't know it was going to be what it is, uh, uh, and I auditioned for this strange cartoon. Um, I got the part and started doing it, and then it just morphed into this giant, awesome world of wonder. Um, and I continued doing it until I made the decision to move from New York to Los Angeles. And my hope was that they would let me continue the role of Nurse Joy in Los Angeles. Also, at that time, I was doing my Valentine. And um, the technology existed that I could have recorded my parts from LA. The additional expense was more than the producers were willing to, to do. So I think it was 2003 or 2004 when I moved and they decided to recast. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> How many uh, like memorable like uh, bloopers or something that you did that you can remember that was like a funny outtake or anything like that doing the voices of either Mai or Nurse Joy? Oh my gosh, um, I can't remember any Mai or Nurse Joys, but 
I farted in the booth once. So. <laughs> That's it was so bad. great. Like it didn't get picked up, but I started laughing so hard I couldn't record for like a couple minutes. Um, Did like, you have just kept that in the in whatever show that you were? <laughs> you just kept it, you know, I because you're I, yeah, to it. exactly. Yeah. Oh man! Luckily, I had a, a very um, accommodating engineer who thought it was also hilarious. Um, That's great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm I'm very. Um, professional in the booth and very nervous about getting things right. So there's a lot of actors who are very funny and they'll add to the lines and do hysterical things. I think of very funny things, but I want to keep my time precise and I want to make sure we're not going over. So um, I should start writing down the funny things I think of. <laughs> but, but I can't think of any funny bloopers at the moment. If I think of any, I'll pop back in. Uh, one quick thing as well. Did you, oh, go ahead. Did you have the uh, the do your best? Did you ever get that with the rest of the cast yesterday? Oh. Or was that just specific people that had that? Oh, no. Everybody had that. So everybody had to do your best. No. <laughs> what we talked about yesterday, the, the, the writers would often, they would just they would not be able to figure out how to translate a line in a way that matched the what we call the flap, the, the way the characters move their mouths. So the writers would would try, and they'd, they'd write a line, but sometimes what it would literally say in the script was it would, it would have the line in English, and then in the notes it would just say, do your best, because they knew it wasn't going to match. And I was like, oh, OK. Um, and then it got so prevalent. It happened so many times that they just started writing DYB. <laughs> like, 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 thanks. <laughs> so yeah, Thank that you. happened a lot. Um, before we go on to the next question, I will say, you know, I watched Yu-Gi-Oh and Pokemon, and I I noticed the difference. So uh, you were very well missed on my end. Um, so it's a shame that they didn't, you know, work that out with you. Thank you. Just gonna say that. Thank you. Um, so who has? There was one more. You had a question, right? Go ahead. <laughs> Me neither. Me neither. I'm so much better when I have things scripted. You can sit down and ask the question too, if that. Like, I know, yeah. right? I, that's true. That's Why true. Why would you do that? That's true. I know. Um, when did you know that you wanted to be a voice actor? Mm. And um, I guess what was that process like getting into it? Such a, such yeah. a, uh, thank you. First of all, I I like you. You're fun. <laughs> <laughs> You're awesome. Totally. Right? Yes. Yeah, so go ahead, go ahead. Um, so uh, it started with acting. Um, it started with, let me go all the way back to my childhood. Um, start when I was born. Uh, to quote Steve Martin, I was raised a poor black child. Um, <laughs> not true. Uh, I was a huge fan of Raiders of the Lost Ark. I grew up on Raiders of the Lost Ark. And so when I was a kid, I was like, I. I don't just want to see that movie over and over. I want to be a part of that movie. I, I want to live it. And so I read everything I could about the movie. I watched it. I watched the making of it. I read a book about the making of it. And when I read that book, I was like, oh, there's a director. There's a lighting designer. There's a, a production designer. There's all this stuff I want. I want it. I could do that. I want to do that. So. I got as involved as I could be. Well, first I told my mom that I wanted to make movies. And she said, well, you're, you're 13. You could, um, you could do the school play. And I thought, oh, I don't want to do the school play. I want to make movies with Steven Spielberg. And, um, and she was like, well, that's not happening right now, so go do the school play. So I got involved in theater. and. I just I discovered I loved that. I loved working with other people. I loved the whole thing. The whole I loved drama. I loved playing pretend. So uh, from there I went to film school, and I thought I was going to be a some sort of production person. I wasn't sure what. Um, I knew I was too shy to direct, um, but I I don't know. I I didn't know where I would fit in. And halfway through film school, I was doing other friends' films. I would say, I don't know what I would do. do you just, can I just act in it? You know? And I was like, oh, acting is the best. 
<laughs> acting is really fun. So I'm, I moved to New York and I, I just assumed that I would always have a day job. I assumed that acting was something you would do for free because you loved it. And for a long time that was true for me. I would work during the day and do shows at night for little to no money. And I loved it. I was really happy. And then one day, a friend of a friend said, do you do voiceovers? And I said, yes. And, <laughs> and so they said, we'll come to this audition. And what, what totally, what, what worked for me was having a theater background. Because theater, more so than film, is big. And you, you work on, on characters that are very different from everyday life. Um, that doesn't mean you don't work on things that are true and, and real, but you can be bigger in that truth. Um, so like in film, you'd be like, I'm so mad. And in theater, you're like, I'm so angry. <laughs> um, and that really works in voiceover, and, and particularly in animation, because um, you can be really big and I got, so I got to this audition, and literally the voice director was able to tell me how to do it. He's like, well, this is how you kind of make your voice if you want to do a little boy voice. And I'm like, oh, OK, I can do that. And this is how we want a fancy lady to sound. And, and so he kind of quickly gave me the, the uh, toolbox that I needed to do voiceover. And that was the Pokemon audition. And so I booked the role of Nurse Joy. I didn't hear back for like two months. And I remember thinking, I nailed some of those. I'm, I wonder why they never called me, which is still basically what I think about 50% of my auditions. And in voiceover, I get one out of 100 that I audition for. That's, that's about par. Um, probably not for anime because they know me and they'll call me in with an idea that I can already do it. But uh, for commercial work, I book about one out of a hundred. Um, so my job is to audition. That's what I do. Um, so yeah, that was the long story about how I got into voice acting. Is there anything? Did it? It could have been longer. <laughs> so then. <laughs> Isn't she awesome though? I mean, I don't know. Yeah. 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 Well, talk about, but, uh, so yeah, go. I'm just curious, how old were you when your friend asked you if you did voice acting and you said yes? I was old. I was like late 20s, I think. Okay, awesome. Okay, so I'm a, I am a lighting designer and I work in production. Awesome. I was working in the background. Yeah. Okay, so uh, totally. Can you talk about that experience? Because I think it's really interesting because you said that you were working in the background and you were like, I'm working in the background. Yeah. Only recently, So, I love it. So, yeah, yes. I have had uh, more jobs lately because people will say, can you do this? And even though I've never done it before, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. I do the job, I do the thing, and everyone loves it. Right? Good for you. It changes everything. I totally, um, I totally support you. We should yeah. talk after I'm a writer and I got my first uh, feature screenplay gig like a month ago. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, so I know all about like the behind the scenes stuff, and I've also done theater, so I know about you know the acting. So just if you have any questions, I'll I'll be out there, or I'll actually I'll be by the the guests tables. Do you have questions for me? I'll for sure. Yeah, no, we'll, yeah, we'll ask each other questions. I love it. What was yeah. your name again? I'm Samantha. Samantha, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Samantha. And it's so true. Like it's a it's an improv um, staple. Like when you take an improv class, your first job is to say yes, no matter what your your scene partner delivers. Like you're you're doing an exercise and, and he says or she says, um, we deliver dead fish to the convention. And you look at them and you say, Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And I bought them from my grandma's. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so I think it was Tina Fey who was like, That's my that's how I live life. That's amazing. Right. And Brava Diva. Yeah. <laughs> right? She's a good one. 
Yeah. Okay, we're we're talking. We're talking and, after this. I have a lot to say. And you. next up is comedy rain. No problem. I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna just make an attempt to do yes and, and DYB. <laughs> <laughs> say yes and DYB. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you, Samantha. And I remember you had a question if I yeah. Go yeah. ahead. So you started um, the, uh, your voice acting career in, um, kid, in kid show roles for Pokemon and uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! And, yeah. then, and then you uh, transitioned more into playing Rangiku from uh, Bleach yeah. and Hilda from Eureka 7. Yeah. And I'm just wondering how your opinion of anime changed from the transitioning from the kid shows to the more mature roles. That's a really good question because I, had a hard time recognizing the change at first. Um, I kept coming in with this uh, kid's style. And luckily I had directors who kept bringing me back. They're like, no, we want a more film style. This is more real, more intimate. And um, so that was, it was delicious to, to go to that place and to learn different techniques. As far as uh, how I looked at anime, it was like a whole new thing. And I developed a different appreciation for it. Um, I love Pokemon. It's so awesome. And uh, I love Bleach. I love watching it. And it, it, they're two different genres altogether. Um, yeah, I do have a different appreciation for anime because I didn't know this world at all. I went to my first Pokemon convention right when I started when I started the series, and I was shocked. And people kept asking me my my opinions of other anime and what anime did I want to do next. And and I did a panel with Crispin Freeman, and I was like, where am I? What is this? <laughs> I had no idea what I'd stepped into, and it's still a learning curve for me. I'm always asking people, what are you watching, and what is that? And it's, um, I have immense appreciation that I, I didn't know, for a, an art form I didn't even know existed. Yeah. So you said you love Pokemon. Yeah. I don't. I don't. I I loved what I did, and I loved. <laughs> I loved. Uh, I I don't get the time to watch um, to watch what's on TV now. Uh, my kids watch it, so I get to look over their shoulders. Um, but I don't have the time to cultivate the relationship that I did before. Well, when you were doing Pokemon at the time, did you have a favorite? A favorite. Oh, it's hard to pick. I do. Um, let me think. Everyone loves Pikachu, of course. And, and now the else. others aren't here, so you can be <laughs> you can be frank about which one you like. Yeah. Right. Because like, the group panel was we yesterday, like, and everyone's like, we don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. Right. Of course, we love Bulbasaur, Tara. Bulbasaur is our favorite. Um, no, she, she doesn't care. <laughs> um, well, I like the weird ones. So, Gloom and Jinx, and what was the one that I was showing you today? Oh, Tangela. Tangela. I was like, I, didn't, I never even remember that one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Purple is my favorite color. But I remember Michael, Michael Hegney, who was one of the producers and writers, he, uh, when I was first wrapping my head around what Pokemon was, he drew a picture of a box on the table. He goes, it's kind of like they didn't reject any ideas. He's like, they drew a box and they were like, this is boxy, boxy, boxy. And so, <laughs> like, um, uh, so yeah, I just, I, I look at all of them with wonder. They're super cool. Obviously. <laughs> yeah, I also think it's funny that Chansey is called Chansey and works in a hospital. Like, what are my odds, Doc? Chansey, Chansey. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, someone had to point that out to me, too. 
Yeah, and I'm going to look at those episodes with Chansey, like with more. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll look at it. I'm like, I'm like, what's going? Well, yeah, that's that's kind of that's dark humor, yeah. honestly. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So you said that your kids watch um, Pokemon. Did they know that you were the voice of a Nurse Joyer? Did you tell them, or did they just yeah. figure it out? Well, they're they're young, and they um, I did tell them, and at first they just didn't get it, so they ignored me, and then. Um, <laughs> I was just saying this earlier. Uh, my daughter, who's seven, they sometimes show TV at school before pickup time. And so she was talking about Pokemon. And I said, oh, did you see that at school? And she said, yeah. And I said, did, was Nurse Joy in it? And she said, <laughs> yeah. And I said, you know I, I was the voice of Nurse Joy. And she goes, yeah. <laughs> did, <laughs> did, you, did you tell your friends? No. <laughs> so they're not they're they're not that interested and they saw I had printed out like my uh, pictures to sign and they said um, can you get Tara's <laughs> so it's kind of it's kind of perfect that they're not they're not that into it they love Pokemon and they love the Pokemon they're not that interested in um, the, humans. the humans yeah <laughs> I like the Pokemon Okay, so we'll start with you, and then we'll go back there. All right, uh, so I got here a little late, so I don't know if this has been asked yet, but um, yeah. what's one of, your, one of your most favorite or memorable band interactions that you've had? Oh, that's a good one. Um, I don't know if I have one. The, okay, the, for, starting with the general, it's just I'm still blown away by all of you who say you were a part of my childhood. Um, because I didn't know. I didn't know when I was recording these that they would have such an effect. I took it more cavalierly than I wish I had. Um, yeah, I thought, I thought Pokemon was kind of strange and kind of funny, and it took years for it to sink in that it was more important than I was giving it credit for. Um, the interactions that I'm most touched by are, are people who, who've had more challenges in life and Pokemon really helped them in different ways. And they're able to say, I learned about friendship or I was, um, I was helped by this in some way. And that's not to diminish anybody who just had fun because Pokemon is fun. Um, but there's, there's things that have made me cry. And it's really, it, it's a beautiful world. Thank you for asking that. OK, so I promised him, and then we'll get to you. Go ahead. Not so much with my, I, that one was, clear cut. Um, Nurse Joy actually did go through a few variations because different directors had different ideas. And when I listen now, I'm like, oh, yes, that changed. And I was young enough to not, um, not self-direct in a way. Now I'll go into a room and say, you know what? That started differently than where we ended. Could we go back and listen? And what should we what should we change? Can we change those first few lines, or do we want to redo the last few lines? At the time, I'd just go, <laughs> I think that sounded different, but it's not my job to tell you. Um, <laughs> I don't do that anymore. Um, so Nurse Joy started off in a slightly deeper register. She sounded more like me. Um, my very first line was, next time use the driveway. And by the end, she was like, uh, your Pokemon will be just fine. It was a more almost Japanese anime sound. Uh, so that, that changed over time for sure. But my Valentine was, she was who she was, straight through. All right, go ahead. Uh, so did you voice the nurse story in the Pokemon first movie? Yeah. And how did you feel about Oh, I was so excited. 
I was so happy. I was like, oh, Nurse Joy has something to do besides <laughs> be a caregiver. I was like, I faint? Oh, that's so exciting. <laughs> you know, I'm in a different costume. Oh, I'm a zombie. Like, whatever. It was, it was awesome. I loved that first movie. I still do. Yeah. I think you just gave a good idea as like zombie Pokemon. Like, yeah. I think that that would be like perfect. Right? That's great. Why haven't they done that yet? Unless they have. I mean, I haven't watched like. Yeah, right. Yeah, zombie yeah. Pokemon. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, quick comment before we move on to the next question. Uh, about you know the fans and how they make make this a really nice process for oh you. Gosh, yeah. That's actually why I um, particularly worked hard to get this Pokemon reunion because for me I was like a mega fan. It was it meant more than just watch. Like I, my sister and I became best friends through Pokemon. So m this was this whole show has been beautiful for me because I get to see all of you enjoy this. And I have such a soft, soft spot in my heart for fellow po Pokemon fans. So thank you all for being here. Like, I just have to say that. Because for me, that's seeing you guys have fun and meet everyone everyone that I idolized when I was um, growing up um, is, a, is a huge deal to me. So I hope you guys are enjoying this and enjoying the whole show. That means a lot to me. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> OK, so next question. <laughs> Come on. I know you guys have questions. Go ahead. Man, I have not. I love the cards. I'm not good at games. I was saying earlier that I have a low, I have low tenacity for games. Like when I'm not good at something, I go, oh, oh, I'm not good. <laughs> Which is not my best trait. I, I, uh, I worked really hard at acting. Um, when I wasn't good at something, I got better at it. I, t I went to different teachers. I tried different techniques. I, someone said no. I went to somebody else. Like I, I was really tenacious with that. And so, um, so games, enough. Like someone, a friend of mine wanted to go to Vegas. And I'm like, you know what? I gamble with my career. <laughs> like, I don't really need any more gambling in my life. So I think games are in a similar category. But I do love the cards. And for a while, um, I thought I should collect as many as I can. But money, time. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Do you play the game? Um, the first game was yellow, and that's kind of how I really got into Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. She just kind of handed it off to me, and I didn't really know what it was. So I started playing it, and that's what I've been doing since yellow and been playing after that. That is so cool. So did you have a relationship with the show first, or the game first? Or maybe you just stayed with the game? Oh, I, I did do both. So it was like around the same time, because I watched the show, and then I found out she had the game, and not too long afterwards, and I wanted to try it. Yeah. And I was like hooked on. My only thing was I never had anyone else to play with. So it was always like, I can't catch all of them because someone's like spacing her on the other Oh side. man. Wow. <laughs> right. Right. I'm right. older than that. Yeah. Oh, I can control this. <laughs> and then I know that the trading got kind of out of hand, right? Yeah. People were trading at school and, and people were <laughs> trading in. Um, unethical ways, <laughs> like, <laughs> what were your guys' experiences with trading? All the cards got banned from the school because of it. Mm -hmm. Really? Trading yeah. or um, battling or playing the card game, it just got out of hand and teachers were like, and principal was like, no, enough, enough of this, you need to focus on school. <laughs> right. you, know, you know Black Friday? That's how it was. Like that's how I. Remember. <laughs> that's how I remember it. I yeah. would actually come. I felt like I was a drug dealer, and I was like, "Hey!" And I'd come in with money. And I'd be like, "Hey, um, Jake, I want your Charizard. And I'm <laughs> offering you like forty dollars. I got it from my mom. You know, like no, no. Like I asked her. I didn't steal it from her. Wow. And she was like, "I'll give you forty for $40? Pokemon." Mm -hmm. It was the Charizard. You know the the Charizard that's um, like, yes, from the nineties. That one was, and I feel bad now. I'm like, that's worth more than 40. I swindled this young kid, but I was eight too, so I didn't feel too bad. I was investing. I was investing. And we need to talk because I played all the games. I have a lot of um, legendary Pokemon, so I, I'm, I can 
give them to you. I mean, at this point, I don't play them anymore, but I have quite the collection. I'm telling you, mega fan. So if you guys have a card in mind or a like in-game po Pokemon, I have so many of them that I'm willing to like give them. I'm not even joking. Like, <laughs> I have, I have 10,000 cards that I've collected. Yeah. But anyway, there were a few questions. Raise them again yeah. so I know. Okay, and I think you had one too. You're good now? Okay, so all right, all right, well, you haven't gone yet, so we'll go to stories. you and then we'll go to you after. Uh, so you were in Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! Which cards do you like the best? Which cards? Yeah. Um, I've seen more Pokemon cards, but the Harpy Lady cards are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I, I don't know, I don't know. I can't decide. I'm also a Libra, so decisions are hard. <laughs> I like them all the same. <laughs> all right, and then we have. So mine was uh, more of a comment on your earlier question. Yeah. About our experience with, uh, the yeah, I'd love to hear that. So um, my sister and I, you know, played together. I was playing red, she was playing blue. <laughs> yeah. my, my sister and I definitely bonded over the uh, the two the two games as well as the uh, TCG when we were collecting and playing. Together. What's TCG? The What's trading card game. Oh, game. okay, thank you. And uh, and actually, that leads up to my question: is you know you said that you collected the cards. Did you ever actually play a, a, a game with them? No. Now I just buy them off eBay. <laughs> I know. It's sad. Don't buy them. I don't. Text me and I'll just like <laughs> give you. I have so many cards. It's it's insane. I'll keep some for my kids, but. I'm so wait. So did you and your sister like team up to get them from other people? Were you like? Well, in in the in the video game, you know. Oh. I, you know, I was playing. I was playing red. She was playing blue. And oh, oh, oh. There were, there were uh, Pokemon that were exclusive to each version, so we could work together. Oh. Right. You know, and how that, and that's how they uh, evolved. And then it was, it was the same way with you know the trading card game. You know, we collected it together, and uh, you know we didn't really work together to uh, complete a collection, but you know we did both participate. Yeah. And, the, and it was the same thing. It was, it was the biggest thing going on at school. You know, and it got it got really out of hand. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's what I was doing in the locker, like the locker area. I'd like bring it out and be like, "Come on, like this, you know, it's time to do it." Get back there. Oh, go ahead. It was hinted at, but as as far as I know, that was it. Like what you saw was what was in the was in the script. Um, Wayne and I had a chance to do a convention together back in early early two thousands, and uh, it was super fun. We got to kind of play pretend uh, our old relationship in the show. Um, yeah, but, but what you saw was what you get. There was nothing more. <laughs> Um, quick comment, actually. They had a huge age gap, too, right? Oh. That's what I really, like, we? wasn't he, like, a teen, and she was, like, in, um, like, Mai's in her, like, mid-20s? And I felt bad, because I was like, I, I don't have a problem with this, because we're an anime, <laughs> yeah. we're an anime world. Right. Um, and, you know, <laughs> when, when she's 70 and he's 60, like. It doesn't matter, yeah. <laughs> I think, did you have a question? Go ahead. Because uh, I never thought I would be in this particular position. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm, kind of an, uh, uh, I'm kind of an older gentleman. Not that much older, but older. I graduated in 1999. So uh, my high school uh, went through the throes. Because I, 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 I was in Southern California at the time. So it was when the West Coast exploded into Pokemon Mania. So it washed over my high school. And um, we had um, a not insignificant uh, age, age in percentile, and they were absolute uh, Pokemon card and anime maniacs. And I remember some of the silliest conversations nearly came to fisticuffs, and 
Wow. <laughs> Sisters, sisters. There was a. There was a. There was an episode. Yes. Yes. Although back in the day, I didn't get any letters. I don't know if if uh, if letters came to Four Kids, which was the production company, and they didn't do anything with them. Um, now I get letters, if anybody wants, wants to write letters, through my agent, and I can give you that address. Um, although they're a little disorganized, so sometimes it takes a while for me to get them. Um, and now it's probably you know, I don't get money emails, or but you can always write on, um, what's it called? The Instagram? The kids like the Instagram? <laughs> The Facebook. That's nice too. <laughs> the Twitter, yeah. Telegrams. Yeah. Western Union. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go go find those people and tell them. You know. There is an answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a resolution. Yeah. This made yeah. my day. This is great. Yeah. Well, um, also, weren't they at some point, like, some, like, because there were so many, like, nurse joys in every town, right? Mm -hmm. And I think at one. Not creepy. Not creepy at all. And then there was one episode where they were like, oh, no, that's just my cousin. So apparently the cousins look alike. So I think oh, they're sisters. So I think they're, they're sisters cousins and cousins. So I think it's just a big family. Not creepy. Um, not creepy, but in anime world, we don't care, right? Yeah. So you can tell them that, too. Yeah, <laughs> sisters and identical cousins. Yeah. Oh, my God, who cares? What? But she cares. Everyone cares. <laughs> Who is this person? <laughs> He's a messenger. I like it. <laughs> well, thank you Flash for bringing forward. the yeah. question. You never know. And you've got you you've got know. your answer from the person that, that can actually give the best answer. <laughs> yeah, please. Yeah. Yeah. Let her know on the Instagram. On the Instagram. <laughs> All right, so questions. Oh, go yeah. ahead, and then we'll go to you. Perfect. Um, do you have a favorite Yu-Gi-Oh episode or moment? Ooh. Oh. I like the very first episode that Maya appears in. Um, I like that, that Maya was so sassy and mean at the beginning. I mean, I think, uh, I was going to say she softened a little toward the end, but not really. Um, a funny thing happened. I don't remember what season it was when Mai went into a coma. Mm -hmm. I was pretty sure I'd been fired because no one called me to work. <laughs> and, uh, and, um, um, and I was there for something else, and I was like, well, I guess I was fired off Yu-Gi-Oh. And they were like, what are you talking about? And I said, well, I haven't worked in a long time. They were like, because Mai's in a coma. It's like, oh, does she come out of it? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> like yeah, because the show wasn't airing. You know, it was it was we were way ahead of when the show was coming on the air, so I had no way of knowing. 
tell a girl. <laughs> awesome. And then you, right? Yeah. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Ask ask both. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, but someone else here has, so ask your question. This is disappoint the crowd moment. Yeah. <laughs> so he's asking about Detective Pikachu, the one that just came out yeah. in theaters. I'm not part of that. I, I I'm sorry to say. Oh. <laughs> What'd you think? Hmm. All right. All right. That's not bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Heck to the yeah. <laughs> In a heartbeat. <laughs> Especially if it's Steven Spielberg directing exactly. it. Exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, number one, because it'd be so much fun. And number two, because work is work. Like, my, uh, I don't turn down, well, my number one mantra is don't turn down work. But I've had to revise that because there's been some. There's been some crappy work um, in the world, but mostly I don't turn down work. Um, but come on, Nurse Joy live action, yeah. The I, I haven't seen Detective Pikachu yet. I do want to. I'm very curious. Who's seen it? What what what's the consensus? Thumbs up. Nice. Okay. Okay, I gotta go. Um, but like everything's they've turned everything into live action now, right? It's like. It's yeah, it's what's it's what's happening. Um, but the only thing I noticed in the trailer was that we spent a lot of time being told how to pronounce Pokemon. The, for the first five episodes or so, we said Pokemon, and then we got a missive that it had to be Pokemon, and so we had to re-record some episodes. It was too late to record the first ones, but it was Pokemon, um, and that was you know that was that we had to say Pokemon, not Pokemon. Um, and then I noticed in the movie trailer they say Pokemon. I was like, what? It's Pokemon. Uh, my five-year-old, by the way, says Pokemon. And I, and I said, uh, actually, honey, it's Pokemon. She's like, no, it's Pokemon. Not in Pokemon, but in, um, oh my gosh, in some of the anime when I have to pronounce the original Japanese. Yeah, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I can't even remember them, some of them, or, or Bleach. Yeah, the long, the long first and last name, or last and first names. Oh. Yeah, and I just clench up, I'm like, and I have to tell myself, you can do this, you got it. Because my first thought will be like, I'm gonna mess this up. I'm gonna mess this up, they're gonna have to do like 20 takes, I'm gonna get fired, it's gonna be terrible. And then I have to say, actually, you're really good at this. <laughs> it's like, uh, I, when I'm driving somewhere late, I'm like, I'm never gonna find a parking place. Actually, you're going to find a parking place eventually. <laughs> you always do. Anybody else? Go. Yeah. So, when you, um... Yeah. They just threw it in. They're like, guess what? You also get to be the pig. I was like, thank you. <laughs> and I started doing a kind of realistic pig, and they're like, no, no, no. This pig says oink with the K. <laughs> All right, then. Go ahead. What initially got you interested in acting? Acting. Yeah. Yeah, I love acting, and um, the one awesome part of voice acting is not having to do full hair and makeup before an audition. <laughs> like, um, and the people are so good. Like I've done um, 
on-camera commercial auditions. I did that for a long time. And uh, I would walk into a room and people would check me out, like, oh, she's the competition. Um, they'd all be looking in mirrors. And I walk into a voiceover audition and people go, hey, how, did you book that thing? Oh my gosh, I auditioned for that, how is it? Um, and it, the same is true in commercial and in voice acting. The same, if, if the casting director is looking for vanilla, they're not gonna cast strawberry. Like, it's just, it's just a thing. Like, it's not personal. It's never personal. But for some reason in on-camera work, people get really weird, and they think that you're competition, and if you're there, they're not gonna get the job. In voice acting, it's, people are just kind. It's a really cool group of people. Go ahead. Oh, that's so good. Um, yes, but I can't remember who. <laughs> <laughs> there was one. I've, I've done like teeny little parts in Sailor Moon recently, and there was one Tara Sands sent me because it looked like me, <laughs> but, I, but I didn't voice that one. Um, well, okay, I currently do a character in Guild Wars called Glenna, and the voice doesn't sound like mine, but. Uh, I do resonate with her. She's a bit of a know-it-all, which is not how I, which is not how I live. But her lines are really well written, and um, and she goes through some pretty crazy experiences with uh, humor and sarcasm. And so in that, I, I always read the lines, and I'm I'm like right there with you, girl. I got this. Go ahead. Uh, you were uh, playing Bleach. Did I? What's that? Yeah, I'm, I'm Rangiku Matsumoto in Bleach. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, super cool. That's the one, yeah. That was like the best reaction though. Yeah, that's right? Great. Oh my gosh, that's yeah. great. I'm taking you with me to all my panels. <laughs> Did you have a question? Yeah, um, do you have any advice for people trying to get started in voice acting? Uh, number one is acting training, theater, film, whatever. Um, and, you know, I, Tara pointed this out and I was like, oh yeah, that's so true. The business is so different from when we started. So there's resources that, um, that are more up to date than what I know. Um, Tara Platt, I think, has a book out um, and there's uh, websites. I think it's, is it Debbie Derryberry has advice on her website? D. Bradley Baker, sorry, I'm getting my D's mixed up. D. Bradley Baker has advice. Um, but definitely acting training, first and foremost. Things are happening in, you do have to be where the work is, which right now is New York, LA, and um, I forget where in Texas. Um, it might be Austin, where Funimation is based. Um, yeah, but you guys know you're watching stuff, right? So you know the genre and you know the style, and that you're already you're already halfway there. And you have a wonderful voice. I can see it. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. And then like message yes. message us on the Instagram and let us know that you actually got your gig and I would love to hear that that's awesome yeah, for sure. I, I love hearing those like updates um, and then if you're done with your question I know the gentleman in the back had his hand up go ahead um, was there a character that you ever wanted to voice act for in the show that I wanted to and didn't yeah, or you did oh well there have been auditions I've gotten and didn't book, and I was like, oh, I should have booked that. Um, the one that comes to mind is I was up for a voice match for, um, an Amy Poehler voice match for, what was that Disney movie, Inside? Or Inside Out. Inside Out. Yeah. I was up for the voice match for that, wow. and I, I worked so hard on it, and I really nailed it, and I was like, I was very surprised they didn't call me which is such a diva thing to say. I was so surprised they didn't call me. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of disappointments. I, I was saying earlier, like, 
maybe it's 25% of the auditions I, I have. I'm like, wow, I really nailed that. But it's, it's part of the business. Um, when I auditioned for Rangiku, I, I loved her and I loved the read. And so I was, I was really gunning for that. I, I really had my fingers crossed and was really pleased that that, that worked out. Um, uh, super cool. We can tell from your reaction. Yeah, you know, most of the ones I've most of the ones I've booked, I was excited about. Like I knew in advance what was going on. There've been there've been ones that I was called in for that I had no idea what was happening when I went to the first session. Um, but like Rangiku and Mai were ones that I knew what was happening and I was excited. So let's say one more question and then I think the room, we're getting tired. Yeah, I actually, if you guys don't mind, I have a question that I think you would enjoy. It's less of a question. So yeah. um, you mentioned on the panel yesterday with the group yeah. how you played some of these like other characters that they would just have you do on Pokemon. Oh, yeah. I think it'd be fun for them to know who else you would voice every now and then. So like yeah. one of the cheerleaders, right? Oh yeah, we were, um, somebody mentioned Gary in Pokemon. And um, it was one of the early episodes when there was uh, a bunch of cheerleaders saying, Gary, Gary, he's our man. And so I turned, I had turned to Rachel and I was like, were you one of those cheerleaders? She goes, yeah. And, and Tara, were you one of those? And Veronica, were you one of the cheerleaders? Yeah, it turned out all of us were the cheerleaders. So they would just, they would just throw out things. They'd say, we, we need this voice, we need that voice. And that was one of the really great things about that time is that we were all, um, we were all just like ready to go and do whatever, whatever they called us for. Um, do you have uh, an Arnold Schwarzenegger accent? Sure. You know, I, that was for like Ultimate Muscle. Does anybody remember that? I was somebody's Arnold Schwarzenegger mother. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just weird stuff came up all the time, and it was super fun. And sometimes we'd be the Pokemon, but I just found out why I never got called. Like, cause I thought, yeah, Tara just told me that if we had under if a, char if a Pokemon had under 10 lines in a script, they would just pull up old things. So I was like, oh, I was Gloom once or twice, but they never called me back. Well, it turned out they would just take my old Gloom, Gloom, and, and they would plug it back into the script. Mm -hmm. I recorded it once, and they would just reuse it. So I'm like, oh, that's why. Um, I did not know that. But yeah, we got to do lots that's of That's very cool. All right. Yeah. Well, that, do we have time for one more? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I hate to say no. Uh, I try not to because it's weird. <laughs> there's, Tara and I were just talking about there's a voice actor who does it all the time, and it's uncomfortable. <laughs> You're like, okay, cool. Um, but yeah, it does pop out from time to time. My kids don't like it, my husband likes it. <laughs> Super awkward. <laughs> so I'd like to remind you all that she will be signing for the rest of the show today. Yeah. Yeah. So please stop so by up. her table. Yeah, and if there's any questions I didn't answer, um, I'm happy, happy to answer them. And tell me more stories about your Pokemon experiences. I'd love to hear it. And also, we'd love to see you at uh, Rachel and Tara's yeah. panels as well. Yeah, they're, Tara's way funnier than I am, so. You'll totally enjoy that. And you're pretty funny. You're pretty funny. <laughs> anyway, thank you all. Thank you so much.